Hello beautiful babes in book land. My name is Michelle and welcome to Challenge Thy Shelf. Today I just wanted to do a quick video for you guys showcasing my New Year's book haul. It's a bit of a long list so I'll just try to shoot through these as quickly as possible. For my first book I got The Picture of Dorian Gray by Oscar Wilde. This book is about a young man who sells his soul for eternal youth and beauty and vibrancy. Meanwhile, there's a portrait of him that, um, where the pictorial representation of him is aging and getting older. This book, when it was first published, and I think even now, is sort of regarded as a something that's vulgar and immoral, I think were the words specifically used to describe this book, which I'm perfectly okay with. Um, so I'm very much looking forward to reading this over the next couple of months. The next book I got is A Clockwork Orange by Anthony Burgess. Now this edition I got from the Folio Society. It was a very generous gift from my fella. Um, and this, unfortunately this light is just not doing this book justice, but it is so beautiful. And if you can see, it kind of has the scaly texture. Um, in the background and then this in the right kind of light just becomes very iridescent and shows this display of colors. But it's really, really very gorgeous. So this book has a foreword by Irving Welsh and also the artwork is done by Ben Jones who, if you guys are interested, I'll link the Folio Society video below to how this specific edition was made and Ben Jones's artistic process. But this book is set in near future English society where a band of hyper violent kids, teenagers led by um, our main character named Alex are just running rampant in this village, in this town, in this society. Alex is eventually caught by the authorities and this is his experience of his attempted reform. Again, a very, very well-loved book and a very well-loved story, and I feel so honored to have such a beautiful edition of this book. Also from the Folio Society, for Christmas, I picked up a copy of Down and Out in Paris and London by George Orwell. Um, and this is basically George Orwell's account of living in squalor in the 1930s in said cities in Paris and London and just sort of his experiences and general observations of urban poverty in the 1930s. This is also such a beautiful edition of this book. It's cloth bound and just has these really lovely decal sort of paintings on it that I just thought was such a really lovely edition. I was so excited to find this and be able to have it. Next, I got The Narrow Road to the Deep North by Richard Flanagan. This was the 2015 selection for the Man Booker Prize. This tells the story of Australian POWs during World War II that were forced to work on the Burma Death Rail. Um, and that's all I know about the book so far. What drew me to Richard Flanagan was hearing him on the Vintage Podcast. He was there talking about his new book, First Person, which will be out in April of 2018. And the way that he described his book and talked about his writing, I just, I kind of developed a little bit of a crush on him to be truthful. And I feel like he's one of those authors that I'm definitely gonna develop a literary love with. So I'm really excited to get to this book and have heard really wonderful, lovely things about this. So more to come on that. You guys have heard me talk about this book. This is My Absolute Darling by Gabriel Talent. This focuses on 14-year-old Turtle who is growing up in relative isolation with her survivalist father who is emotionally and physically volatile. Throughout the story, she encounters a character who sort of shows her and introduces her to the way other people live, that there's opportunity, that there's chances. And her seeing this inspires her and encourages her to escape the life that her father has confined her to. And the story of her escape, I believe, just becomes very emotional and very harrowing. And this book has been 
touted as being very uncomfortable and upsetting, but Stephen King did a beautiful, beautiful endorsement of this book. And he wrote in the blurb just briefly, this book is ugly, beautiful, horrifying, and uplifting. The word masterpiece has been cheapened by too many blurbs, but my absolute darling absolutely is one. I don't, I don't, I don't know how you fight that. I don't know how you cannot read that, but I'm very excited to read this and will most likely do a full review once I'm done with it. The next book I have is And Yet by Christopher Hitchens. Now, Adrian over at Stripped Cover Lit put his name in my ear and I was very interested in reading him. So I don't know much about Christopher Hitchens, but here's what I do know. I know that he's a very controversial literary and social critic. I know that nobody is off limits when it comes to his criticism. I know that he is an atheist and that's about it. I'm finding that I do have a lot in common with Adrian as far as authors that he's attracted to, the types of stories that he's attracted to. So I feel like it's a pretty solid recommendation coming from him. Michael Durda from the Times Literary Supp Supplement said of his writing that, or said of Christopher Hitchens, that he was a flail and a scourge, but also a gift to readers everywhere. Flails and scourge are my kind of people, so I'm pretty sure I'm gonna enjoy this book. Next, I picked up The Rape of Europa, The Fate of Europe's Treasures in the Third Reich and the Second World War by Lynn H. Nicholas. Now this book, I have seen the documentary that they made of this book probably seven or eight years ago now. Um, I loved it so much that I saw it maybe three times. I took everybody I knew to go see it and enjoyed it so much. I just thought it was such a rich story and a rich piece of history that maybe a lot of people don't know about. But this book is about the systematic pillaging of art in Europe during World War II. The Nazis were going around to all these beloved institutions in Europe and stealing art, um, possibly to destroy it. I don't know. The intentions are very unclear about what was to become of these pieces of art, but it tells the story of the lengths that people went to to save this art. And I won't give too much away, but Mona Lisa's escape story is probably one of my favorite art anecdotes of all time. So sometimes I know documentaries tend to leave out pieces of information when they come from books. So I am very much looking forward to reading this. It's 400 and some odd pages in this itty, itty bitty tiny font. So we'll see how that goes. You might not be hearing about this for a while, but hearing about it nonetheless. Next, I have Blood Child by Octavia Butler. This is a compilation of short stories by this very beloved science fiction writer. Um, I have not read any of Octavia Butler's other stories yet, but I thought short stories were a good place to start. And because short stories are not something that I generally gravitate to, I thought I'm already interested in her reading. She's got a collection of short stories. This is a great place to start. Seven Stories Press has been releasing her books with these really beautiful redos of the covers. Um, so if you guys are interested in checking those out, they really are kind of something special to see. Next, I have The Bostonians by Henry James. I'd been interested in picking up Henry James for a while, and this to me seemed like a story that was very much my style and something that I would really enjoy. So this centers around the main character, uh, Verena Tarant, I believe is how you pronounce her name. And she is just this very fiery public speaker and she catches the attention of an East Coast suffragette and also a Mississippi lawyer. And what ensues is sort of a battle for her mind, for her body, for her potential, and is sort of satirically commenting on the state of feminism and social and sexual politics. So this I'm really looking forward to reading as well. Last but not least, I have picked up Lincoln in the Bardo by George Saunders. This was the 2017 selection for the Man Booker Prize. And this is a story of President Lincoln's youngest son, Willie, who was ill and eventually died. 
And the story is of Willie being in this in-between place, this liminal place called the Bardo. And um, if you know anything about the Tibetan Book of the Dead, there are three stages to the Bardo. And I believe this is the first stage of the afterlife Bardo. He meets a lot of characters that are also in the same place as he is in this in-between state. Um, and I believe a lot of humor and hijinks ensue, but also a lot of sort of soul crushing and enlightening um, encounters come from that as well. Meanwhile, Lincoln is visiting the cemetery every day to mourn and grieve the loss of his son. And the blurb in here said that a monumental struggle erupts for young Willie's soul. So there's definitely some stakes to this. Again, there's a bunch of reviews of this on, on booktube. So if you're not necessarily sure about whether or not this is something you would be interested in or pick up, I would highly encourage seeking out some of those reviews to see. But anyway, those are the books that I have for you guys today. Thank you for watching and I will see you soon. Take care. Bye.